Hello guys and welcome to all those training to become Super Saiyans. This is Revolution. So on this video we're going to be discussing Android 17 and Android 18 and their impact in the Tournament of Power. We're going to be looking at their character progression not just in Dragon Ball Super, but right the way from Dragon Ball Z in the Android Saga. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you will know that I have loved the reintroduction of Android 17 in this series. Dragon Ball Super has done Android 17's return right, much better than the return we got in Dragon Ball GT. We've seen the growth and change within Android 18, otherwise known as Lazuli, for quite some time now. But the Android 17, also known as Lapis, has been out the picture for quite some time now but we are starting to see major signs of his development as a character especially in episode 117. Seeing 17 and 18 reconnect during this tournament of power in my humble opinion has been fantastic to watch and I hope we get more of it but this video is going to discuss why Android 17 will erupt when Android 18 is eliminated. Just before we delve into this discussion further, I'm just going to ask anybody new to this channel to please subscribe, as well as any returning viewers who enjoy my content to make sure you subscribe. And to anybody who has been subscribed to my channel for a while, if you're not following me on these social media platforms and you have them, do come and follow me to get my daily uptake on anything Dragon Ball. Some things don't necessarily make it into the videos. So in episode 86 of Dragon Ball Super, we finally got the reintroduction of Android 17. We learn from Android 18 that she's not really seen Android 17 in quite a while. She doesn't even have his phone number to call him, and we know he has a phone because he showed his family to Goku on his cell phone. She is not even sure where exactly he is, she just knows that he works at a wildlife preservation. Despite being twins and made into androids by Dr. Jiro, their lives that were previously entwined have simply grown apart for whatever reasons. They've not fell out but they haven't stayed connected. Obviously, Goku needs strong friends to help compete in the Tournament of Power, so he went to visit Android 17 after Dende gave him 17's location and even let Goku know that 17 is a formidable guy and that they should be thankful that he's no longer an enemy. Already we know that 17 has changed and already we're starting to get inklings that 17 is going to be a lot stronger than previously thought. What used to be an immature, rebellious, reckless, anarchist he quite frankly had a superiority complex and was murderously sadistic episode 86 we see an android 17 that is much calmer than before he is much more mature than his previous rebellious self from the android saga he has proven to be quite casual and even humble upon being resurrected by the dragon balls android 17 has gained a family including three kids and two of them adopted it highly suggests that Android 17 does have a caring nature. Now, we actually learned that Android 17 worked at the Wildlife Reservation in the Boo Saga when he lent energy to Goku to defeat Kid Boo. Knowing how powerful Android 17 is now, it would be interesting to know what proportion of the Spirit Bond came from Android 17 alone. However, in episode 87, Android 17 sacrificed his life for the animals that he protects. So his occupation as a park ranger proves that he is nature loving in a similar regard to his fellow android and formerly close friend android 16. So it suggests that his love of nature may have been influenced by android 16. So how does this somewhat compassionate fellow not take time to go and see his family android 18 and her daughter Maron? I hope I pronounced that right or she'll kill me. Well in episode 86 after a beautifully animated fight with Goku, which ultimately proved Android 17 after training for all these years of being an inactive character in the show, had somehow gained the power to enforce Goku to use Super Saiyan Blue. Now, there's a bit of debate whether Ultimate Gohan is at Super Saiyan Blue level. I'm still on the fence with that because there are no conclusive statements there guaranteeing he is. But in this scene, Goku clearly states that he did not feel he would have to use Super Saiyan Blue in this fight and that Android 17 has pushed him to it. He then goes on to say that Android 17 is still holding back. Goku even acknowledges it in the Tournament of Power when Android 17 brutalized Kakunza of Universe 2. But despite seeming like a compassionate family man in episode 86, he then goes on to reveal he doesn't care if the universe gets erased as long as everyone gets erased together. 
Now this suggests that Android 17, despite maturing a lot, still doesn't see the full picture and truly understands the magnitude of erasure, which would ultimately rob Android 17's family of their futures, as well as Android 17's moments he will share with them. But in episode 117, there is a moment he shares with Android 18. She has injured her ankle and Android 17 is tending to her ankle and Android 18 mentions that Goku mentioned to her that Android 17 wanted to wish for a ship to take his family around the world and implied that she would go with them. Android 17 simply responds with a smile, acknowledging the notion of reconnecting with his family, sharing sacred moments with his family members beyond the tournament of power. And here I think the penny has finally dropped for Android 17 and he now truly has something to fight for. He is fighting for a future, a future for his family, his wife, his kids, his sister and her kid. Considering the whole notion of the androids in the Android saga came from the future with future trunks, I find it quite fitting that what Android 17 is fighting for in this tournament is the future, which in my humble opinion, and dare I say it, brilliant writing. Now, just to clear it up, I'm not saying 17 and 18 came from the future. They are the present 17 and 18. I'm saying their whole story started off with Future Trunks coming from the future. Android 18 and 17 were originally programmed to assassinate Goku. And here they are in this tournament protecting Goku. 17 and 18's character growth, their development has been incredible. At the end of episode 87, Android 17 told Goku it's weird that he would be fighting aside him considering he was programmed to kill Goku. Goku then went on to tell him about Tien, Piccolo and Vegeta and even Majin Buu. Even his sister Android 18 who were all once enemies of Goku, now allies. The reason I've enjoyed 17's return so much is because it's been pretty much an understated return. But by being understated it's been incredibly effective. In Freeze's original return in ROF, it was overstated and little to no character development for Freezer. It wasn't the return Freezer deserved. I do believe they are making that up for Freezer in his newest return. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Goku's character has been stagnated ever since pretty much the Dragon Ball series. Goku's development as a character pretty much plateaued in Dragon Ball Z and has continued to plateau. Some would even say declined in Dragon Ball Super. But this is the thing guys, the reason Goku remains a constant in how he is and his being is because everybody else grows around him. Vegeta, Piccolo, Tien and even Beerus and Whis themselves have been taken in by Goku's infectious personality and character. Even the legendary assassin Hit has. Android 17 is just the latest in line. We are even seeing Frieza think more deeply than his revenge plot against Goku about his own future. Has Frieza realised he needs Goku in the same way Vegeta needs Goku? Anyway, with Frieza, that's just speculating. With 17, the proof is in the pudding. We have seen his change of values right in front of our eyes. He is fighting for the future of his family. In all honesty, on my first view of episode 117, I didn't actually enjoy it that much, despite the fact I was happy it was an Android-centric episode. I, like the majority of us, found Ribrian excruciatingly annoying. However, on my second run through of the episode, I truly understood what this episode was about. It was giving Android 17 and 18 that extra incentive to fight. I don't think it can be summed up any more perfectly than saying blood is thicker than water. So given that Android 18 is already showing wear and tear, despite what seemed to be another power hack for a character in Super against Ribrian, 17, given his power level, should last longer than Android 18. But when Android 18 is ultimately eliminated, I can see Android 17 gaining even more incentive to win this tournament. 17's desperation in episode 117 to save 18 from the big Amore attack, whatever it was from Ribrian, showed his compassion for his twin sister that he even got distracted and got attacked by another contestant. 
ultimately to body that contestant and once again come to 18's aid. We haven't seen Android 17's full power yet. When Android 18 is eliminated, given his newfound motivation to win this tournament, he will erupt into the hidden power Goku keeps talking about. Android 17 is very strong and do not forget he is an eternal energy model android. He simply doesn't tire. So unless we end up getting a fusion between 17 and 18 creating Android 35, I believe this is why Android 17 will erupt when 18 is eliminated. Now remember guys, this is just a hypothetical discussion. Take it with a pinch of salt. Let me know your thoughts on the androids in the Tournament of Power. Have you enjoyed their return? Do you believe they will fuse? Do you believe any of them has a chance of winning this tournament? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. If you like my videos, make sure you smash that like button with the biggest Kamehameha you can muster. Do not forget to subscribe and remember one very important final message. If you stay calm in any vexing situation, you will never, eh, 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 ever become a Super Saiyan. If you love talking about Dragon Ball on a daily basis, I promise you this channel is for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to get all the latest content as soon as it's released.